remain while seated. Much obliged, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Once again, Ongoya here for the Deputy President. Our request is that we, the schedule allocates us two hours for cross-examination in total and three hours for our evidence in chief tomorrow. We, we beseech that without compromising that time, we put three hours on cross-examination, which will eat from our time tomorrow, our own time, so that we'll have two hours to deal with our evidence in chief. That is not in line with the directions that I've given. You have two hours for purposes of a cross-examination of these witnesses. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We will proceed. Honorable Mutuse, I will refer to you as Honorable Mutuse uh, throughout. And uh, for the benefit of the senators, we were actually contemporaries at the university many years ago. So, speak as they are setting up the witness administratively, I beg my time be paused. Proceed, Council. Thank you. <laughs> Honorable Mutuse, uh, uh, before being a member of parliament, what is your professional background? I am a, a lawyer. You're a lawyer by profession. You therefore understand the substantive laws and the procedural laws of this country. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, it is. I would take a few minutes examining you, then I would release you to my learned colleagues, Mr. Swanya and Mr. Masharia, to take you on a number of issues. But allow me to start with the issue of Justice Esther Maina. You are aware, being a lawyer, that by law, you are bound by the allegations you presented to the National Assembly. Are you aware of that? Well, yes, we are bound by the allegations in the context of the rules of the Senate and the other laws. To deal with the issue of Justice Maina, allow me to take you to paragraph 64A of your allegations. And that would be volume one of the National Assembly documents, page 32. I have it. Do you have that allegation? Yes, I am there. The allegation says that sometime in January 2024, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa made a sensational but false allegation that Honorable Esther Maina, judge of the High Court, had engaged in corruption. He publicly said that he would present a petition for the removal of the said judge, which he has not done to date. It is your allegation that Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa has not presented this petition to date being 26th of September, 2024. True or not true? This is in context. The true or not true? Is it true that your claim says he has not presented that claim as at 26th? True. Do you still stand by that part of your allegation that he has not presented that complaint to the JSC to that date? I have since learned that uh, indeed... Do you still stand by that allegation? I have since learned that indeed His Excellency Rigadi Gashakwa did present a petition, but... That, Do you still that, stand that, by uh, the fact that he has not presented the, the claim to the JSC as at 26 September 2024? I have since learned that he did present a petition. To that extent, that allegation is not true, yes? Uh, 
to the extent of presenting the, the, the petition, but to the extent of threatening the judge. To the extent that he will say he, he has not presented the allegation to the GSC to us at 26th we, we September are, 2024, that allegation is not true, is it? We are in agreement, counsel. Thank you. You therefore understand where we start from by saying it starts with falsehoods. Do you understand that? That, that's, 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 that's you saying so. As whether you understand it. You have drawn the attention of these senators to the judgment of Esther, Justice Esther Maina, haven't you? I have done so. Your intention of doing so is to have these senators draw an inference of acts of corruption on the part of His Excellency. True or not true? Is to buttress. Thank you. Is to. My, it my, is. Okay. My allegation that uh, Justice Maina had made a finding against the Deputy President. Did you attend the hearing of that case? I do not have to attend. It is a reported case. First whether you, in fact, attended. Please answer my questions. You know the process. I did not attend. And there is no His trial. Excellency, in the clip you have played, says that the judge denied him a chance to cross-examine witnesses. Did you see that in the clips? Yes, I did see. Did you have any evidence to the contrary that the judge didn't deny him? See, if you are denied... Do you have any evidence to the contrary? Either you do or you don't. And that is not my, that is not my allegation. My question to you is, is do you question. have any evidence that, to the contrary? That, that, Answer that, my question. But that the truth is, that is a judicial process. Do you have any evidence to the contrary when the, His Excellency says the judge denied him a chance to cross-examine witnesses? I do not have to. Do you in fact have it, Mr. Andre Mutuse? Please be decent as a lawyer, a lawmaker, and a witness before this house. I, I do on, not have on, because Mutuse, I do not have questions ask. that you either say yes or no. We Thank you. We Thank you. You then say you are aware that there was an appeal from the decision of Justice Minor. Do you confirm that as a fact? Yes, I am aware that there was an appeal that was... I'm happy with that answer. Let me make progress. That appeal was settled by consent. True or not true? True. Is a consent a lawful way of settling disputes in court to your knowledge as a lawyer? It is a lawful way, but it is not a settlement. I have, you have answered my question. I am... by merit or demerits. Is a consent a lawful way of settling court disputes before court, disputes before court of law? It is a lawful way, but it is... I'm going to my next question, Mr. Mutuse. You have confirmed my answer. Do you know as a lawyer that a consent order adopted by the court becomes an order of the court? Indeed. Have you presented that consent before these senators for their own assessment of it? It is not part of my case. Have you presented that consent before these senators for their own assessment of it? It was not part of my case. I did not present. Honorable Mutuse, I've asked whether you have in fact presented it. No. Have you lodged any complaint against the public officials of the Asset Recovery Agency who signed that consent? I have lodged it in Parliament. First, have you lodged it before any investigative yes, through, agencies? Through this motion, I lodged a complaint in the National Assembly exercising the powers that I have as a member of the National Assembly. I sought to know whether you have lodged any complaint why, against the I, officials of the Asset Recovery Agency. Are you saying this motion is against the officers of the Asset Recovery Agency? This motion is against the handling of that case. Are you saying this motion is a complaint against the officers of the Asset Recovery Agency? I'm not saying so. Have you lodged any complaint against the officers of the Asset Recovery Agency who entered that consent? I have not done so. Are you suggesting that in a way this motion is an appeal against the consent order in the Court of Appeal? I am not suggesting so.
By the way, do you know the position of the law on illegal consent? Can a court of law accept an illegal consent? I wouldn't imagine that. You're a lawyer. Can a court of law accept an illegal consent? No. Was this consent accepted by a court of law? It was adopted, yes. Shouldn't that present a presumption of legality until you present evidence to the contrary? Indeed. Thank you. Allow me to move to a second element. The videos in respect of the evictions along Nairobi River, I trust that was video nine and 10. I'm just going to recollect. Let's have video nine played from the technical side. Mr. Speaker, may I have video nine played? Is it on? We may need to have the sound, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would argue that the time taken by the technical people to play my videos is frozen because I have no control about it. No, that cannot be the case. Otherwise, we'll continue freezing time. Mr. Speaker, we didn't direct the people in the, gala, in the technical side. Pro we had a similar problem when uh, the council for the National Assembly was uh, leading the council, I mean, the, the witness and evidence in chief. And time was, was in front. So we're going to be fair. We're going to apply the very same rule. Will the governor, John Sonsak. Mr. may I have the public, the technical side play my videos? My time is running. Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, and... Mr. Speaker, may I get fair treatment on this question? May I get my videos played without eating into my time? That's exactly what is happening. Because <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong video being played. May I have the video nine played? Can you pause the time for... Account? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, may I have video 10 played? Video 10 then. May I have video 10 played? I'll have 10 and 10A. Counsel for the Deputy President. Is it a video that had been played previously? Yes, you know, there are the two videos in respect of the evictions along Nairobi River. They were played here seamlessly when the assembly side were presenting their case. Very well. Counsel for the Deputy President, do you have your technical person at the control? 
I, I wouldn't be able to establish at the moment. Please do confirm that your technical person is also in the control. Um, Mr. Speaker, may I move to some other thing, then I'll proceed with the video later. I'm going to start my turn of thought. Proceed, Council. Thank you so much. What do you want to say? Allow me to move to another limb, which is at paragraph 74 of your motion, and that is at page 36. It runs to page 37. Confirm, Mr. Mutuse, that in respect of ground 10, paragraph 74A and B are the two illustrations, the two particulars that you have given to prove that ground. Yes, in the motion, those are the two grounds. Let me start with the ground B. Paragraph B, rather. Confirm that you allege that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has influenced his family members, allies, associates, and proxies to take control of a local corporate society in Madeira, which they are financially hemorrhaging. Is that what the motion claims? It does claim it. so. Confirm that you have not given us the name or any evidence of that circle. Have you? Let us not have a war with Wananchi. To speak on Wananchi, let us be empathetic. Let us, if people must move, let there be an engagement. And let people. Yeah, there is a problem up there. Okay, proceed. And then at the time you wish the video to be played, you will. Let us, the senators know. Proceed. Let us not have Proceed. a war with Wananchi. The team at the control room. Let us be empathetic. Uh, Secretary, can you move to the control room and tell them to Let there be wait. an engagement. And Speak closer to the microphone, Honorable Mutusia. Speak closer to the microphone, please. We will be urging the Senate to uphold the impeachment. Mr. Mutusia, I'm asking a specific question on a specific allegation. It is your desire for these senators to impeach this deputy president on an allegation that he has, through his proxies, taken control of a cooperative society we don't know, isn't it? I have said I leave that to their decision. Is it your desire? Is that what you desire? You want some outcome from this process, you as the move of this motion. Is that what you want of this motion? What do you understand when I say I leave it to their decision? You have no right oh, to ask me any question. Says, just say yes or no. We move on. We make progress. Thank you. My, my apologies. Yes. Thank you so much for that comic moment. You, have, you also want this distinguished Senate to find the deputy president 
to have taken over the control of this unknown circle, now this is my element, through undisclosed family members. In, indeed, it is my desire that the motion is upheld. Mr. Mutus, Honorable Mutuse, do you know the seriousness of the business that keeps us here? Very well. My apologies, I didn't get the answer. I didn't get the answer. I, I know. Thank you. You find this request for senators to find this deputy president guilty of taking over an undisclosed circle. A serious expectation on your part. Indeed. You also find your expectation for these senators to find the deputy president to use unknown family members to talk about that circle a serious expectation. Indeed. You take your work as a member of parliament seriously? Very seriously. You respect your constituents who brought you to this house? Very much. And you are, manifest you are manifesting that respect for your constituents by this expectation you have just mentioned here? In fact, the whole country is discussing my motion. I'm asking whether you are manifesting your respect for your constituents by the expectation you have just alluded to. In the totality of the No, 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 I'm talking motion. about this particular fact. I'm dealing with a particular fact. In the totality of the motion, yes. My question is, your expectation for this Senate to find the DP culpable on allegations of undisclosed family members of an undisclosed circle. That allegation, you are manifesting your respect for your constituents through that allegation. Yes. Thank you. Paragraph A alleges that His Excellency Grigade Gashagwa has connived with cartels in the tea sector to block the Kenya Tea Development Agency from implementing guaranteed minimum returns that would benefit smallholder tea farmers. Is that the allegation? Indeed. Have you given us in this motion or in the supporting evidence the name of any cartel? No. Have you given us in this motion or in the supporting evidence the grievance or the complaint by the Kenya Tea Development Agency? No. This is also part of your expression of respect for your constituents. Indeed. It is also part of the seriousness with which you take this motion. Indeed. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, may I now move to the video 10 and 10 a Let's start with 10 first. Kayone Tangu mutupatia nafasi ya uongozi Sija pata nafasi ya kuja kusema asanti Nata kutoka kwa roho yangu Dani Wati ya Kayone asanteni sana Mimi najua Nimiona hiko shida ya watu Ambaye walipomolewa Sindio Na nimeona mumeandika vizuri ya kwamba muteue kamati ya watu wachache. Dio mukuje niketi na nyinyi. Just pause there. Mutakubaliana. Pause there. At that time, the deputy president is suggesting that he needs the, the people, the citizens there to have a small committee to have an engagement with him. True or not true? True. Is there anything wrong with that claim by the deputy president? There is nothing wrong with Let's proceed. Mimi ningetaka wale watu ambaye walipata shida hii ya upomoaji ambaye ni kitu tulikuwa tumeahidi wananchi haitafanyika kwa serikali yetu. Mimi ningetaka diwasikize na nitapanga na mheshimiwa Meja Dong wakuje diotukue na nafasi ya kuongea. Let's pause there. Tumekubaliana. 
the deputy president is saying he wants to listen to those people so that together they can talk. Is that the, what he's saying? Ambayo ni kitu watukua tumehaidi ya itafanyika kwa serikali yetu. No, no, you didn't get my question, Mr. Mutuse. Please be a good listener just as you answer my questions. The deputy president is saying he wants those to, to, to sit with Honorable Madong, I didn't get the name right, and those people so they can sit and talk. Is that what he's saying? In context, yes, that's part of it. Is there anything wrong with that statement? There's nothing wrong with people sitting. The deputy president is also saying that they had promised during the campaigns that they will not be demolishing people's structures. Is that what he's saying? Yes, he's saying that. Is there anything wrong in that promise? There is nothing wrong in that promise. As an active member of the Kenyan political space, is he lying that there was such a promise? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Let's proceed. Tumekubaliana. Tumekubaliana. Watu ya kayole. Let me have Let us time. not have a war with one inch. Let's stop there. The deputy president is saying, let us not have war with the Wanainji. Do you find anything offensive in that statement? There's nothing offensive. Thank you. Let us not have a war with Wanainji. To speak on Wanainji while we to Jagua, let us be empathetic. Let's stop there. Let us. He's calling for empathy towards Wanainji. Is that correct? Yes, indeed. Do you find anything offensive in that call? It is the forum where he's saying it. You have anything wrong with that call for empathy? I have a problem with the forum. No, no, you're answering your own question. I'm asking whether you have a problem with the call for empathy. My allegation is that he had forum. I've asked whether you have a cabinet. problem with his call for empathy. Please answer my question. He would have said as much in cabinet. Please answer my question. Do you have a problem with a call for empathy? I have no problem with the call for empathy other than Let me move forum. to the next question. Do you have a problem with a deputy president calling for empathy in public? I have no problem other than the forum. You ha what forum was that, by the way? This is, appears to be a press conference. What law prohibits a pre deputy president from calling for empathy at a press conference? The law is that he will raise all those issues in cabinet. Which once, law prohibits once. a deputy president from calling for empathy at a press conference? It, there is no law that prohibits a deputy Thank you so much. Let's make progress with empathy. the playing of the video. If people must move, let there be an engagement. Thank you so much. What is wrong with that statement? If people must move, let there be an engagement. What is wrong with it? There is, no, there is nothing wrong with having engagement. Thank you. You are a lawyer, you say it? Yes. You know the principle of public participation? Indeed. It's actually what the deputy, the deputy president is addressing. The deputy president is saying, let's have an engagement. That is consistent with the constitutional principle of public participation. True or not true? Well, that's you saying so. The deputy president is saying, let's have an engagement. Is that consistent with or inconsistent with the constitutional principle of public participation? Engagement and public participation may mean different things at different levels. The deputy president is saying, let us have an engagement. But I'm asking whether that is consistent with or inconsistent with the principle of public participation. As again, as I said, we would imagine before a policy goes to cabinet, it has also been taken through public participation. Did you, part did you engage you sit, in public participation? And if you sit in cabinet, you raise objections to that policy, and if your objections are upheld, the policy falls. Which if part of this statement by the Deputy President? If your objections... Sorry, I'm not asking the question. Yes. Which part of this statement calling for empathy violates a policy decision of cabinet? We have, uh, we, we, are, we have the affidavit of Masi Wanjao that clearly shows that the cabinet adopted a position on that Did the cabinet adopt a resolution for unempathetic evictions? The deputy president was in cabinet. He is the one who better placed to tell us. What you are the move of this motion, and we are testing the deputy president's statements against your allegation. Indeed. Did the cabinet adopt a resolution for unempathetic evictions? The cabinet adopted a resolution. Did the cabinet adopt a resolution for unempathetic evictions? Yes or no? A resolution for empathetic evictions. And the DP here is calling for empathetic evictions from what we have heard. So not true? True. So that is consistent with the cabinet resolution. True or not true? Uh, 
semantics. So, because my question been answered from your understanding, I don't think they've been answered. Order, honorable senators, you simply, you note how the witness is answering the questions and make your judgment. Let's, let's make progress, let's make progress. If a witness is evading questions, please note that. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, you are right in that ruling, Sev, that is doing this at the expense of my time and the Deputy President's time and at the compromise of the Deputy President's right to a fair hearing where he has to have adequate time, which means time managed economically. Proceed. Did Cabinet approve an empathetic or empathetic evictions? Cabinet approved evictions in public interest. I'm asking a different question. Empathetic. Did the Deputy President call for empathy or lack of empathy? Empathy. Is that call by the Deputy President consistent or inconsistent with the Cabinet resolution? Inconsistent. Did Cabinet approve a resolution not to engage citizens in the demolitions? That I wouldn't know because I'm not a member of Cabinet. And yet you are saying that call by the Deputy President to engage citizens is part of the violation of the Cabinet resolution. In context. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Mutusa, Honorable, I sought to know whether the, the, the people the, 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 the you respect, the people who elected uh, you, do you suspect they will respect you with this behavior you are showing here? Mr. Speaker, I will also request for your protection because the people of Kibweza are not on trial. <laughs> I didn't try the Council, 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 Council for the Deputy President, just stick to the subject matter. Mr. Speaker, we seek that our witness not be subjected to barbs or badgering. The question whether he respects or the people respect him and what not. The allegation is clear in black and white. If we could stick to that, it would help. My learned colleague, Dr. Council, Diankolo. I've already ruled on that. I know, but my let's lord, proceed. my you know, let's, there's a question or issue here. Let's make progress. I'll, I'll make the progress, uh, Mr. Speaker, as, as you direct. Let's look at paragraph 72 at page 35 of volume one. Page? Page 30, page 36, my apologies, 36. The original motion had 35, it's now 36 on the reproduced motion. Paragraph 72. You're saying, his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has persistently undermined, demeaned, and committed insubordination instead of assisting the president. Honorable Mutuse, has the president of the Republic of Kenya complained to you that he's being undermined by his deputy? No. Does the deputy president have another supervisor in the structure of government other than the president? The people of Kenya and parliament. Have the people of Kenya complained to you that the deputy president is undermining the president? Many of them. Have you presented before this court, this Senate, those complaints by the people of Kenya to you? I am their representative. Have you presented them the complaints, the emails, the letters, the messages? You have given us screenshots here. Have you given them to this Senate that the DP is undermining the president? That I don't have, but I have presented the motion. Allow me to move to ground four. Let me start by asking this question. It is your claim that 
The deputy president has amassed a humongous property portfolio estimated at 5.2 billion shillings. That's uh, ground four. It is not. So that. My apologies, ground seven. My apologies for that. I'm sorry for that. Ground seven at page 17. My apologies for that. Yes, it is our allegation, and we have justified it in our evidence in chief. Who gave you this value of 5.2 billion? We said estimated at 5.2 billion, and we have. Yes, who gave you that estimate value of 5.2 billion? We have made the additions. Sorry? It's a matter of additions. So, we will, you are saying that when we take you through these values, you'll get a property value of about 5.2 billion? Approximately 5.2 billion, yes. You said you made the additions. Additions result into a definite figure, Mr. Mutuse. Although you are a lawyer, mathematics are pre-qualification for studying law. <laughs> there, there, there are two things. One, there, there is the... Are you saying that when we do those there's, additions, there's we the, will get 5.2 billion? There is the stated value in the sale agreements and in the acquisition documents. That's what I'm saying. Are you saying when we add those values, we'll get 5.2 billion? I will also be telling you what, in my view, are the values of some of the properties? Oh, what, in your view, are the values of some of the properties? Yes. You have graduated from a lawyer to a valuer now, isn't it? That's not exactly what you're saying. OK, what thank you. View, Using what expertise did you attach that value in your view? Well, market value. I'm sure you also know land in Kitale, an acre goes for 4 million. Land in Kilifi, an acre goes for 2 million. And if it goes beyond that, it's a reasonable man's test. And that reasonable man is you? Indeed. Thank you. At paragraph 44, at page 18, yes. you have listed a company called Spiritway Limited in your motion. Yes? Number 18. Page 18. Paragraph 44. It's a continuation of ground seven. I'm, I'm doing ground seven now. Page 18. Spiritway Limited. What wrong are you saying that company has done anywhere on earth? What wrong? I did state, I listed these companies. No, no. I'm asking Spiritway Limited. What wrong are you saying Spiritway has committed anywhere on earth? These are companies that are associated with His Excellency regarding Gashagwa. His so, and what Gashagwa. wrong has Gashagwa committed through Spiritway Limited? I'm dealing with this one now. Spiritway Limited. What wrong has he done through this one? It is one of the companies that we reasonably suspect are convicts, are used as special purpose vehicles for corruption. So, what proceeds of corruption have passed through Spiritway Limited? How much? We have demonstrated the specific. No, no, I'm asking what proceeds of corruption have passed through Spiritway Limited as a particular company? In our evidence, we have not presented evidence against Spiritway. You have not? Yes. No, you know, in correct have... English, when I say you have not, you say no, we have not. You don't say yes. Okay. You have not presented evidence. We have not presented evidence. Thank you. Let's move to Fortis Vis Group Limited. What wrong has Fortis Vis Group Limited committed anywhere on earth? Forties. Number two on page 18, company number two. Sorry? For, we have no, no quarrel. page 18 of 85 for volume one. No, we have no quarrel with forties. Sorry? We have no quarrel with forties. I didn't get answer. We have no quarrel with forties. You have no quarrel with forties vs. group limited? We are done. What is it doing in this motion, Mr. Mutuse? Decorative. It is one of the companies associated with His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. What is wrong with Fortis Vis Limited being associated with Rigadi Gashagwa? What is wrong with that? At the time of submissions, we'll be stating why we think there is something wrong. No, no, we want that question answered now so that we will submit on it. What wrong has Fortis Vis Group Limited committed anywhere on earth? Why would one person own 25 companies doing the same things? What law prohibits a person owning 25 companies? What uh, I, I law? I think counsel for the deputy president. The Honorable Mutusi has said he has no quarrel with that company. Which Just is what? To settle it. You know, Mr. Speaker, I made an opening statement. In my opening statement, I said we have allegations that oscillate from the false to the ridiculous 
to the embarrassing. If he just answers and I keep quiet, I'll fail to demonstrate the oscillation. I want these distinguished senators in their conscience to know what exactly we are doing here. Because they were given an 85-page motion to deal with. Oh. This is part of the content of 85 pages. Surely, Mr. Speaker, for Mr. Mutuse to tell these senators that he brought them this company just as a name, I, I don't know how dignified this house would feel, but if I sat where this house sits, I would feel that's undignifying. Proceed, counsel, with uh, your cross-examination. So you say one person should not own 22 companies, isn't it? I've said I do not have... No, no, you've said so. That's your answer. I, should I, don't, I don't have problems with Fortis. That's correct. Who are the shareholders of Fortis? Fortis is Kevin Regadi and Keith Ikino Regadi. The only crime being they are children of Regadi Kashago. Indeed, they are children of Regadi Are they prohibited as children of Regadi Gashagwa from holding shares in a company? As proxies... Are they prohibited from holding shares in a company? Not at all. So what proxy business has 40 with Limited done? Because you keep saying as proxies. What proxy business has 40 with Group Limited done? I have already stated that we do not have any problem with 40 But you have put it in your impeachment motion to support one of your grounds? It is there. Without any problem with it? It is there, and we have stated the reasons why it is there. Grand Pi Bypass Apartments Limited. What problem do you have with it? We do not have a problem with it. This company that you have listed, you have no problem with it? We do not have a problem with it. But you have put it as one of the grounds in your impeachment motion? It is one of the companies associated with Rigadi Kachangwa. And there is, it, there is no problem with listing and saying, I am focusing on this one and I am not focusing on this one. Paragraph, no, parag page 19, company number five, the Anansi Collective. What problem do you have with it? You are skipping Vipingo and Kuroito. You want to control my cross examination? No, I just Honorable want to... Mutose, just respond to what counsel does. Anansi Collective. We do not have we do not have problems with that one. Biovet Kenya Limited, what problem do you have with it? No, not 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 we do not have a problem with it. Calvary Creed International Limited, what problem do you have with it? We do not have a problem with it. Cosmia Venture Limited. What problem do you have with it? We do not have a problem with it. But we have a problem with number Delta De Delia Merchants Limited. What problem do you have with it? Not at all. But we have a problem with Vipingo Beach. Let me go to Vipingo Beach because you appear excited to go there. Who owns Vipingo Beach? My Just answer my question. Who owns Vipingo Beach? I need, to, I need to check my CR troughs. Show us the volume that you're checking for us to look at together. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I wouldn't mind a time indication of how much time I've spent. The Pingo Beach on volume 2A, page 18. You spent 40 minutes of the two hours and at the Thank you. There's an additional 10 minutes for Thank the, you. Uh, uh, when we had a problem with the video. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Give us a page number kindly. Page number 18 of 123, volume 2A. Yes, proceed. Who owns the Pingo Beach? Keith Ikino Rigadi, Kevin Gashagwa Rigadi, and the estate of the deceased James Nerito Gashagwa. Let me go back to the beginning. You're a lawyer by profession. Yes, I am. You know the meaning of ownership of a company? Yes, I do. How is ownership of a company manifested? In shareholding and that. Okay. How many shares does Keith Ikinu Regadi hold? According to your own exhibit. <coughs> it may be getting hotter, but look at the document, compose yourself, and read. How many shares? Does yeah. Keith Ikinu regard the hold according to your own document? They are not indicated. 
How many shares does Kevin Gashagwa Rigadi hold according to your own exhibit? They are not indicated. What is the total number of shares in that company? 10,000. Who is indicated as owning all those 10,000 shares? There is a shareholding by the estate of the deceased James Nderito Gashagwa. It is the estate of the deceased James Nderito Gashagwa. True or not true? They own 10,000 shares. What is the total number of shareholding? 10,000. They own all the shares? They own 10,000 shares. What is the total number of shares in that company? 10,000. So they own all the shares. The estate of the late James Nderito Gashagwa owns all the shares according to your document. It would appear so. Is it so or is it not so? From your own document? It, uh, on the face of the document, it would appear so. Do you doubt this document you have given us? No, I don't doubt it. Thank you. The deputy president then in defense says, uh, this is a property owned by the state of my late brother. Is he speaking the truth or not? From your own document? We... The deputy president says, this is a company owned by the estate of my late brother. Looking at your own document, is the deputy president saying the truth or is he not saying the truth? The estate, Remember, you are a lawyer all the, the time. Estate, the estate of the deceased James Derito Gashagwa owns 10,000 shares. Out of how many shares? I wouldn't vouch for the truthness of the deputy president's I'm saying testimony. the estate of the late James Nderito Gashagwa owns 10,000 shares out of how many? 10,000. Mr. Mutusa, you told me you are a lawyer. Yes. And let's be lawyers now. Yes. When the deputy president therefore says this company is wholly owned by the estate of my deceased brother, is he speaking the truth or not according to your document? It's either yes or no. We make progress. We move, Honorable Mutusa. Yes. Thank you so much. You had begun by telling us you have a problem with this company. You have a problem with the estate of the deceased owner holding all the shares in the company? No, we do not have a problem with that. From your company law knowledge, do you know the role of directors in a company? Yes, I do. What directors play in a company? They make, they Direct. Directors are management. They manage. They direct the management. Correct. The, the leadership. What is wrong with these two boys managing this company on behalf of the shareholders who are disclosed? What is wrong against the law? There is nothing wrong. Okay. The value of this hotel is part of your 5.2 billion. True or not true? It is. Are you willing to deduct it now from that? Because you can now see who owns it. At the appropriate time, we will show. Are you willing to deduct it? No. Thank you. So I was proceeding for you stop me to deal with you, Pingo, and I've dealt with it. I hope to your satisfaction. Are you satisfied? We can proceed. Heartland Supplies Limited, what problem do you have with it? Mm, if you could remind us, that was page? Oh, sorry, page 20 of 85, company number 14. Volume 1, eh? Volume 1, volume 1, yes. Uh, can move company, the company number? Number 14. Company number 14, just to confirm we are on the same page, this is Heartland Supplies Limited. Yes. We have no quarrel with Heartland Supplies. Page 21, paragraph 17, Mothers of the Land Limited, what problem do you have with it? We have no quarrel with Mothers of the Land. Number 18, Pioneer Medical Kenya Limited, what problem do you have with it? We don't have a problem with it. Overleaf, page 22. Read of Furniture Mart Limited. What problem do you have with it? We do not have a problem with it. Royal Crimson Ventures Limited. What problem do you have with it? No, no, not at all. Technical Supplies and Services Limited. What problem do you have with it? We do not have a problem with it. You listed all these companies just to create a screaming headline for your motion with no problem with them. We created, we listed all these companies 
to show that they are associated with persons close to the deputy president and that they are companies that are either used or can potentially be used for purposes of corruption and money laundering. Okay, they can potentially be used. The DP intends to use them in future, so this motion is preventive. Indeed, we are addressing fears. You have come here to address fears that DP may use this company in future to commit corruption. Indeed, yes. That's why you want this Senate to impeach the DP on this ground. We have also shown... No, that's why you want this Senate eh, to impeach the DP on this ground. There are, there are some that we have shown have been I've, I've, I've taken through a others, number of companies, Mr. Mutuse. I've taken the number of companies, yes. but one by one. Yes. You have said you have no problem with them. We have no problem with the ones that we have said we have no problem with. Let's go to paragraph 70. Eight A. Seventy eight A. His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa bullied Kenya Medical Supplies Agency officials into awarding a tender for the supply of mosquito nets to Crystal Kenya Limited. Was Crystal Kenya Limited a bidder for this tender? Crystal Kenya Limited is a local I've asked you, was it a bidder for this tender? It is a local representative of Is it a bidder for this tender? By the way, let me now ask you basic questions. Do you know the meaning oh, of the word oh, bidder? Oh, no, it is it's not a bidder. Simple. Yeah, we make progress. We respond, we make progress. So let's read the, the allegation, the particulars. Yes. yes. It says, His Excellency Rigati Gashagwa bullied Kenya Medical Supplies Agency officials into awarding a tender for the supply of mosquito nets to Crystal Kenya Limited. Was Crystal Kenya Limited, in fact, awarded that tender? They were, they were not a bidder. Were they, in fact, awarded that tender as your ground alleges? No, they were not. So why are you alleging that they were bullied into awarding the tender? Why are you alleging when they were not awarded? They are the local representatives. I'm asking why are you alleging that they were bullied into awarding, being awarded the tender? Because they are the local representatives of Shobika, the company that is under investigation for this tender. Your ground says, huh, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa bullied KEMSA officials into awarding a tender for the supply of mosquito nets to Crystal Kenya Limited, his proxy company, full stop. Is that allegation correct? In the context, Is that allegation true? In the, we, there was no award to... Is that allegation true? It is true to the extent is, that they are it is representatives. That his Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa bullied KEMSA to award a tender to Crystal Kenya Limited, his private company. To Shabika, represented by... I'm asking you a different Kenya. question. Your allegation is that KEMSA was bullied to award a tender to Crystal Kenya Limited. Full stop. Am I reading it correctly, by the way? You are reading it correctly. Is that what I have read correctly itself true? In the narrow sense, it is not true. Thank you so much. You also say that Crystal Limited had submitted a fake big bid bond with the sole intention of fraudulently acquiring public property. What do you mean by a fake bid bond? An irregular bid bond. A what bid do you mean bond, by an irregular bid bond? A bid bond that was found not to meet the requirements. What was the irregularity that was found in that bid? I guess that is why ESCC... No, no, what was the irregularity? Yeah, that was about the allegation here. What was the irregularity that was found with that bid bond? Uh, the, what? There was a specific irregularity. What was it? It was brought outside time. You are sure of that fact? It was brought outside time. You are sure of that fact? In so far as I know. 
I'm saying, are you sure of that fact? Because you are not. In so far as I know. No, are you sure of the fact? It was a lot of time. I was just, are you sure of the fact in that so it was brought out of time? So far as I know. You referred us to the letter by Kemsa terminating that bid. Do you remember? Yes. Can you draw us to the, that letter, the volume number and the page where it is? And the counsel is talking to the witness and you can see, he's actually answering the question. He's a junior colleague, he's engaged in extremely unethical behavior that should not be done in a small claims court. Forget about a country's Senate. Mm -hmm. You've seen it with your own eyes. Counsel for the Deputy President, I cannot hear exactly what was exchanged there. Uh, and therefore, I don't have the benefit of uh, what was exchanged, and I'm not in a position to rule on it. Okay. Let's make progress. On yes, the yes, I'm, co I'm coming to you shortly. We have uh, the affidavit of uh, Dr. Andrew Muller, who was the acting CEO of KEMSA at the time. I've asked for the letter from KEMSA rejecting the bid, the letter, the three letter. In our volume one, from page 67, you ask him for which letter? As if you refer to the letter by KEMSA, that rejected the bid by, in this mosquito net, deal? No, I referred, I referred us to the messages from Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa son to the children, to, to, to the CEO. Let's go to that directly. Let's just go to that issue directly so that we finish with it now that you have raised it. Are you referring to the document at page 70 of volume one? Yes, indeed. From which phone number is that message coming? It's, uh, it needs to be read. Together. From which phone number? You know a phone number? With paragraph four. I've asked from which phone number? Just give me the phone number. Plus. It is sending the message. Plus two, five, four, seven, one, seven, eight, seven, one, zero, three, six. I'm asking at that page, we can see a screenshot of a message. Is that screenshot telling us the phone number is coming from? It is, it is not. It is not. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now want to deal with the document I had looked at earlier. Let's look at volume three of the governor's, sorry, the, the deputy president's documents. Grab it. Look at volume three of the deputy president's documents at page 180. Yes, there we are. That is a letter from Kemsa. Yes, on the face of it. It is addressed to Shobika Impex Private Limited. Yes. It is setting out the reason why that bid was unsuccessful. Does it set out the reason? It says, reference is made to the above, sorry, my apologies, we are looking at page 180 of volume three of the deputy president's documents. And uh, it's been projected on the, on the screen. For those of us who can see the, the font on the screen, it's been projected on the screens. It is setting out the reason why that bid was rejected. It is because the tender security was not paginated. Yes, from this document it says so. That's what you are calling a fake bid document. That's what you are describing as a fake bid document. The document you have shown. I'm asking, this reason is what you are saying constitutes a fake bid document. Of course, if the tender security was not paginated, yes. it is irregular. Are you saying it is fake? It is irregular. Then I'm asking a different one. Are you saying you and this sentence conclude that this attribute failing to put a page number on a bid document made it fake? It made it irregular. I'm asking a different, the word you have used in the motion is fake. We are trying the motion. No. 
but irregular. Thank you. Your statement in the motion, therefore, that was fake is not true. It's false. Your statement in the motion that was fake is false. Strictly, yes. Thank you. Let me move to a fairly different limb of argument. And this is now Let's go to the question of Olive Gardens Hotel. We have some massive documents here sometimes you... Let's deal with the affidavit of Peterson in Jomo Mushira. Indeed. According to Peterson in Jomo Mushira, how did he acquire this property? Rather, how did his company, that's the correct way of putting it, isn't it? Team Engineering, yes? How did his company acquire this property, the process of acquisition? He says he entered into a secret arrangement with the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa to purchase the property on their... Who was purchasing the property? On the understanding that... No, no, I'm asking a different question. Who was purchasing the property? That TM Engineering. The purchaser of the property is TM Engineering? Yes. Who is the registered proprietor of the property? Let me, let me, let me confirm. This is the... Is a proprietor of the property Olive Gardens Hotel. I'm, I'm, I'm tracing the documents. Olive Gardens, the registered proprietor. Is Philip Wanje Makago. Sorry. Philip Wanje Makago. Is it? Uh, can you refer to the page, the volume and the page you're looking at? This is the volume 2A, page 10 of 123. So who is that? Who is that? It's Philip Wanjema Kago. I'm asking who is he? Do you know him? No, I don't. Let's look at your affidavit of Njomo. Yes. First, you concede, he says, the deputy president requested him to buy the property. In, in response? No, no, he requested him to buy the property, as a fact. In, your, in, your, in the deputy response... I'm talking, I'm talking about what Jomo is saying. Jomo is saying mm. the deputy president requested him to buy the property. He entered into a secret arrangement. Do know? The requested him talks. to buy the property, as a matter of fact. Yes? Yes. He bought the property. Yes? Yes. 
on terms of on certain terms of a secret arrangement according to him. That the arrangement was that? That the deputy president would buy the hotel from would buy the hotel from him. By refunding the no, purchase. No, no, would buy the hotel from him by refunding the money. Yes. Has he in fact bought it? He would be the correct As he, No, you are the motion mover. You are here with us. You will not run away from anything, Mr. Mutuse. Mutu Has he in fact bought it? I would imagine so. Sorry? I would imagine so. When did he buy it? I do, I do not know. Oh, you want these senators to impeach this deputy president on your imagination? I have said, and there is nothing wrong, with not knowing, I do not know. Does Mr. Peterson Njomo Mushira say that in fact, the DP has bought this hotel? Does he say so, that in fact, the DP has bought this hotel? He says. Does he say that in fact, the DP has bought this hotel, yes or no? He says. Does he say that the DP has in fact bought this hotel? Yes or no? He says that the deputy president would buy the hotel for me by refunding the purchase price of 412 million set out in the agreement. And if we believe Mr. Njomo, this is a promise for a future transaction, if we believe him. Yes? Yes, of course. If we believe Jomo, yes. what he's saying there, this is a promise for a future transaction. It would appear so. No, no. On the face of it, it is a promise for a future transaction. Not so. It would appear so. But has that future come? Has that transaction happened to your knowledge? I believe so. What's the basis of your belief? Your own response. Sorry? In your response, in the DP's response, you say... It, that has the DP said he has bought that property? It was bought by TM Engineering. Is that not a fact? Is that what Njomo is telling us? Yes. So what the, what the DP is telling us, it was bought by TM Engineering, and what Njomo is telling us, it was bought by, by TM Engineering, factually are the same. Factually are the same. Then Njomo is bringing a new perspective to it, that the future. DP promised him, in future, I will buy back this hotel. Yes? In, in, and, and that's why he's saying... Jeme is saying, yes. the DP then, when I bought this hotel, yes. the DP then told me I intend to buy it back in future. Yes. By the way, is there any and lawfulness in a future intent of a property? It points to a scheme. A scheme to? A scheme to do what? It points to a scheme. To do what? To launder. Sorry? To a scheme to hide the transaction because... Mr. Mutuse, let's also just be basic sensible people. If we wanted to, we would just have bought it immediately. Yes. Isn't a promise to buy in the future itself on the face of it, evidence of lack of immediate money? On the face of it. Well, that's a matter of interpretation. That's what I'm telling you now, Anders. You know you're a lawyer like me, and we are good at interpretation. In fact, we are trained that's in interpretation. So I'm asking you the question. Is the promise to buy in the future, on the face of it? Jomo says they have a secret, because we do not want to assume what Jomo is saying. Jomo is saying in his affidavit, there was a secret arrangement that I cover for the deputy president. I buy it to be registered in my company, and then he refunds me my money. Has that refund been done? He would be the best place to tell us. When did Njomo buy this hotel? It's around March 2023 from the affidavit. Mm -hmm. Not true? Gone around that first March. More than one and a half years ago. Yes. To date, you are thorough investigation to support a motion to remove the DP from office has not revealed evidence that the DP has in fact bought the hotel. You want us to imagine he has bought it, yes? My, my allegation is that he bought through proxy, and the proxy says, indeed, I have a secret arrangement with the deputy president to buy the hotel on his behalf as a proxy. The, and I, I did not allege that it has been transferred to the deputy president. I said it's an intricate web of economic crimes, white collar crimes, that are this promise to buy a hotel in future is white collar crime. Indeed, economic crimes are white collar crimes. I'm asking this promise to buy a hotel in future is a white collar crime. 
it is part of the scheme to hide the real owners of the property. So let me wind up this argument because my time is running out. You have made hue and cry of the DP's wealth portfolio. At least you know that, isn't it? Indeed. You have also told us that even if we gave him the best possible assumption, he would be having 24 million shillings in his account because that's his salary. Yes? The known sources of income. Are you suggesting that the DP became DP impecunious as a pauper? Not at all. But I also. What was his wealth portfolio by the time he became DP? I have several. Do you know his wealth portfolio by the time he became DP? During the presidential debate, yes. he did say that his, he was worth 800 million shillings. He said he was worth 800 million shillings? Yes. And you would question why he would promise in future to buy a property worth 400 million? And the question why... Do you know the formula he wanted to use to buy the property, whether to liquidate his wealth or quite? Well, Do you know the formula he wanted to use in future that would be to buy him, the property? That would be for him to say, not me. I'm asking whether you know you are the one to establish this charge. Do you know the formula? I have demonstrated that the formula is corrupt and the sources of the wealth are unexplained. Which wealth has unexplained sources that you explained? I have shown... I thought you began by Vipingo, which we have dealt with you. All the way from, all the way from Nyeri, treetops, all the way to Vipingo. We will we'll have our time, our day. Sorry? In terms of Vipingo, we will also be able to show. When? We still have time for submissions. Oh, you're going to call more evidence? No, we are not calling evidence. We'll just point out to the other documents because we were reading documents in isolation. We'll also show other documents that point out to his ownership of the Vipingo Hotel. Mr. Speaker, may I invite my colleague, Mr. Masharia, to pick up from there? And thank you very much. Thank you too.